in the 2030 global agenda with its 17 sustainable development goals supporting referencing access to quality health service for all that has at its core a simple but profound message, no one will be left behind. He stated, and I quote, the term leave no one behind means just that. It sounds easy in theory, but practice is more challenging. The most important requirement is information, average achievements for individual health-related variables, disguise significant inequities that can only be revealed if the information is disaggregated. Statistics can tell us the numbers of people who do not receive specific services. But further investigation is needed to, uh, to assess who these people are and why they're excluded." End of quote. This bears relevance to the lack, as the minister indicated just a while ago, of appropriate data on Alzheimer's and dementia in the Caribbean region. Alzheimer's and dementia and the lack of hospice care have not been generally integrated enough as part of a sustainable regional healthcare system. The cruel fact in our Caribbean society is that we have stopped taking care of the old and the elderly as we once did. Alzheimer's disease is an emotional minefield for the unsuspecting and the unaware. I have personally seen the hurt, pain, and anguish of the children of parents of dementia and Alzheimer's disease when a mother or a father cannot remember their child. It is heartbreaking when persons you have known all your life, your first teachers, nurturers, and family members in the throes of dementia are unable to recognize bond, and even communicate with you. We therefore need a vibrant, unflinching advocacy in the Caribbean region as it relates to the crisis of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Advocacy can assume many forms and initiatives through conferences like these, NGOs workshops, training modules, and very importantly, sometimes through the power of one. That power of one is demonstrated by the commendable advocacy work of Rihanna Patterson from the Commonwealth of Dominica, who at the age of 18 years founded the Dominica Dementia Foundation, launched on the 2nd of September 2016. She and her foundation represent a regional youth template for immediate solution. Her grandfather having died from dementia. Dementia for her became a health priority. And through the power of her youthful vision, her foundation was born with its solitary aims to accomplish the following. Raise awareness of dementia, raising funds for families affected, providing emotional support to caregivers, those who suffer from dementia and their families, facilitate research towards dementia. She recognized that young lady of 18, that persons with dementia are vulnerable, easy targets for criminals, helpless at performing their personal daily task, are mistreated intentionally and unintentionally, unintentionally by even family members. And as she stated, and I quote, most of this is due to a lack of understanding, training, and knowledge about persons who have dementia, end of quote. This type of proactive youth advocacy model is needed throughout the Caribbean region so that all can be sensitized to become agents of social change and reform. Alzheimer's disease is not 
a pensioner's affliction. It is not exclusive to or the sole domain of the very old and elderly. It is now making significant inroads and impacting among persons in their early 50s. Apart from possible fallout due to genetics and even lifestyles, environmental factors may well be at play in the unseeming progression of Alzheimer's diseases among our citizens of the region. We simply cannot give up in ensuring and protecting a sustainable quality of life for those patients suffering from dementia. A critical step in treatment protocols and care is early detection. In the Caribbean region, early detection is minimal primarily because of a re reactive healthcare philosophy. We react. It must therefore become a mandatory part of routine medical assessment to test for Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia in those vulnerable demographics. This can be done throughout the region by our primary healthcare doctors, especially at healthcare centers engaged in the following, by engaging the following. Inquiring from everyone over 50 and others at risk about their overall health, changes in their behavior and personality. Two, conducting tests of person's memory, problem solving capabilities, attention span, and use of language. And finally, carrying out standard medical tests, blood and urine, and performing brain scans where possible, like magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, computed tomography. Optimism, however, must still face reality. And living with Alzheimer's disease for everyone affected is an adorous road that engages a didactic from hope to treatment and a potential cure. Do not give up on life or living because there is no cure as yet. Hope lives eternal. And great things are happening in the world of science. We must not engage in, no sin, in a syndrome of hopelessness. Scientists are now able to clear the stick plaques from the brain, which triggers dementia, and put a stop to mental diminution. Irreversible memory loss and cognitive decline have possibly found a foe in the drug Adukamaba. It has been described, and as, as I quote, the best news for dementia in 25 years and a potential game changer for persons with Alzheimer's, end of quote. I have read that Adukamaba is a treatment made up of antibodies and tiny, wide-shaped proteins that latch on to dangerous substances in the body acting like flags, showing the immune system what to clear away. Dr. David Reynolds, the chief scientific officer at Alzheimer's Research United Kingdom, in the light of clinical studies being conduct conducted, evaluating the safety and efficacy of the drug, has stated affirmatively, and I quote, the findings suggest that Adukamab may slow memory and thinking declines in people with early Alzheimer's. It paints a positive picture for ongoing trials with the drugs, end of quote. It may well therefore be an option available to the ministers of health in the Caribbean region to collaborate with CAFA and those research scientists in the United Kingdom to conduct similar clinical trials in the region. Only last week, Her Excellency Rima Kamona stated in Barbados, that happens to be my wife, by the way, <laughs> at a sub-regional consultation for the English and Dutch-speaking Caribbean on the Global Strategy for Women, Children, and Adolescents' Health, 2016-2030, stated, and I wish to quote her, 
having spoken to several stakeholders, the non-approval of new drugs is further burdened by an environment that makes no comprehensive, informed provision for the execution of clinical trials involving new and experimental drugs, end of quote. I wish to commend the Alzheimer's Association of Trinidad and Tobago for the efforts thus far in highlighting the trials, tribulations, and afflictions encountered by persons who suffer Alzheimer's disease and dementia, their family members and caretakers and caregivers. It is my fervent hope that limited information, advice, research, policy, and advocacy and support that obtain now will soon be a thing of the past as you visionaries embark on this new project to bring about transformational change in the lives of the middle-aged and the elderly. There is also a historical heritage imperative to this battle against Alzheimer's disease and dementia. We must seek to preserve and conserve as far as possible the institutional memory of the aged and the elderly. And, this, and in this case, we need to do so medically. My wish for this conference over the next three days is that it is filled with progressive and game-changing dialogue. And in that spirit of inclusive, accessible, and quality healthcare for all, the esteemed pleasure is mine to declare this the fourth Alzheimer's Disease International ADI Non-Latin Caribbean Regional Conference on Alzheimer's and Other Dementia officially open wishing you all all God's blessings and every success. Thank you very much.